Hello, everybody, and welcome to this presentation of the ECL Elite Division right here on Sports Gamer. My name is Tuki. Joined, as always, by Mr. Sin for the win. And Sin, we are back. Can you believe it? Already week four of our spring season kicks off today with two big matchups. We kick things off with Fairstad taking on the Fallon Coal Miners a little bit later on for Lunda HC and Havu Gaming. Another round, another chapter in the very storied history between two of the greatest rivals, you could argue, if not the greatest rivals in the history of the ECL. Yeah, absolutely, and uh, as you mentioned, week four now of this of this of this uh, spring season. Excuse me, and this is where it really kind of gets down to the I guess you can call it the nitty gritty. You know, this is this is the the meat of the season essentially. This is where your your season is made or or it can be destroyed here. And this that's an interesting first matchup here. We have two teams that had very different starts. The Fallon Coal Miners started off very hot. Feristad was a bit more slow out of the gates, but you can see Feristad now creeping back up the rankings and the Coal Miners have been slipping further down. So this is a very pivotal matchup for both of these teams. Absolutely. With that, let's get everybody a look at these standings as they happen to be heading into the action here today. Again, a 30 game regular season sin every team just about at the midway point surprise surprise our two-time defending champions in h red still at that top spot but there are still some surprises sprinkled throughout the current standings absolutely i mean you think about edibro on that left hand side of the bracket still and 14 games played they actually have games in hand over yippie Voskala and goons and conquer gaming same sort of thing you know uh perennial kind of relegation team in some ways but here they are you know right now hanging on to that left hand side of the bracket you know they do have zsc right behind them but again a couple games in hand on those two teams and well the uh yeah the two teams directly below them as well it's it's very impressive to see some of the uh, how some of the changes have been affecting some of these teams and just how they've been able to sustain the success that they found early in the season as well because that's just as important absolutely and of course uh, you know, you, you talk about all the different stories throughout the lineup. I think that could be a broadcast in and of itself. But uh, we do focus on the particular matchup that we have here today. Want to get a look, though, at some of the latest results from around the league, too, just to kind of show you the uh, the form that these teams happen to be in heading into the matchups today. Again, our first match, Fairstad and the Fallon Coal Miners. And again, Sin, uh, the coal miners coming off of, uh, you know, dro dropping all four points to or over a hockey. We can't really, uh, you know, we can't really spice that one up and make it sound better than it is. Whereas Farius Dad, fresh off of the double over IQ, who, again, one of the big stories this season have been their particular struggles absolutely it's kind of uh you know we expected them to sort of come back in the playoffs maybe not get as good as a five seed but you know they seemed like a playoff team but the way that just how competitive uh you know the ecl elite has been in this winter season iq simply hasn't been able to find a way to get going i mean we've seen flashes you look down there you know a six to one victory over zsc like you see the iq that we sort of expect but it just hasn't been consistent enough and I think you hit the nail on the head in regards to Edibro and Fallon Coal Miners, where that's really hard to kind of spice up. And if you're a guy like, you know, uh, the Captain Martindale, you're kind of wondering like, uh oh, wait a sec. You know, I thought we had this offense thing figured out. You know, he's coming from Northern Ascendancy, which was a, historically a team that really kind of struggled to find the scoring sheet. And you take on a team like Edibro, who is, you know, granted having a great season so far, but you're not able to muster a goal. Now you got to go up against Fediasad with McSavid and Net as well. You have to find a way to get that offense going. You can't let it phase you too much, but they are going to need to get those goals because anytime you have you know a team with Martindale on it, you know you're, you you kind of always have that in mind of you know is the offense going to be there? Well, you talked about the offense. Let's get a look at the team stats for our first matchup of the day and see how these two teams compare and send a, a dead even a goal differential for Fediasad at this point of the season and a pretty big power play advantage as well. Yeah. And uh, on paper, this it really looks like, you know, Fediestad has that advantage. You know, the goals against maybe a bit higher than we expect, but they did get off to a bit more of a rough start. They've evened that out, which is good. And the fact that they have an 8-4-2 record with an even goal differential is very good news for Fediestad. If they're able to have that goal differential continue to drift towards positive, they'll be in great shape. And, 
yeah, the, the special teams bat- battle in their favor here. This is, you know, this is a big test for co- for the coal miners here. You know, are they are they for real? Is that good start to the season something that they could build upon, or was it a bit of a flash in the pan? Take a look here at the lineups for the matchup here today for Feriestad. The front three, Afe, Malin, and Ekin. Sebby Larson and Lamanen's on defense, and we get to see McSavid this time out as well. He's in goal. For the Fallon Coal Miners, Martindale, Fopa Toflin, and Sada Poika, the front three. Captain Furion, Matanski, and Paulus Control in net once again been a bit of a rotating cast of characters there for the coal miners this season so far but police control gets the start here we'll start off with our center comp as we always do malin against sada poika and send the numbers certainly in malin's favor yeah, absolutely. 19 points in 14 games played. He's uh, amongst the top 10 in assists uh, throughout the ECL Elite. He has 19 points, which is team leading. We've been seeing that a bit more and more over the last couple seasons here as centers more, uh, a lot more often leading their teams in points or being one of the top production guys where... You know, in the past, we didn't necessarily see that and more kind of drifted towards what Sada Poika is doing, you know, maybe hovering around that point per game mark. But it was usually the wingers really kind of taking, uh, you know, taking control of the scoring sheets. But Mullen has been fantastic. Great face off percentage and, you know, well above point per game. The winger matchup as well going to present some interesting matchups as it is Afe and Ekin for Farius to add Martindale Fopatoflin on the other side. Sin. All four of these guys over that point per game mark where you certainly want to be, but perhaps none of the four quite at the level that they were hoping to be at at this stage of the season. Yeah, definitely. I think, uh, you know, Afe always wants to be at probably at least goal per game or even higher as he doesn't, you know, likely put up a lot of assists. And, you know, same kind of thing for Ekin. I think we definitely expected a bit more from this winger winger duo of Feriestad. Perhaps it's taken them a bit longer to uh, find their footing here and, you know, maybe they'll be able to get going in this series here. But yeah, Martindale, Fulpatoflin, you know, again, pretty solid numbers, but they are going to need to produce a little bit more to to be able to push themselves into the playoffs. And as we do mention, you know, they they off, they also use that uh, the strong side hand in this. So the right winger is a right hand. You know, Martindale on the left hand side will use his uh, left hand in this as well, which is a completely different look than what we see in competitive sixes. But it does seem to work for them. The defensive matchup is next against Sebi Larson and Lamanens against Furion and Tonski. And again, maybe not where these guys would hope to be in terms of an offensive output, especially the two for Ferriestad, who we know Sin can put up rather high point totals uh, when everything happens to be clicking. Yeah, and I think you're kind of seeing maybe uh, both of these teams uh, kind of the outlier in the way of production and why perhaps they're a bit slower out of the gates when it comes to, uh, well, their offensive production. You know, when you see Firion, especially their uh, sub 0.5 point per game, it's just some, something that we don't necessarily expect from him. He's a very, very competent player and a great uh, production guy when he's getting those. You know, Tonski is very capable as well. So not too sure if it's strategies or what, or they just haven't been able to figure out a bit of luck here and there or just being outmatched. But I think both of these defensive pairings expect a lot more from themselves. And if they want their teams to be able to be in the playoffs and go on a on a run at all, they're going to have to step up on the scoring sheet as well as shut things down. And our last head-to-head, of course, as always, the Battle of the Netminders. Mick Saved against Police Control and Sin, both Netminders. Fantastic numbers so far this season. Uh, This is looking like a rather interesting matchup, and certainly the decisions today could, uh, you know, whittle down to how these two happen to perform. Yeah, this is an incredibly uh, even matchup. I mean, the save percentage is, you know, just a 1.2% differential between McSavid and Polis Control and the goals against, I mean, within the margin of error, it's... And if you look at the record as well, you know, you think the coal miners are 6-6-2 six, six, and two right now, but Polis Control 4-2-2 two, and two with this squad. So clearly the guy who's getting the W's here and he's getting the nod once again to start the majority of the games. And this might be who the Fallon coal miners are beginning to lean towards as we get down the stretch of this winter season as they try to make their playoff push. Again, they're at a 500 record sitting in that 11th spot. They're well within striking distance. They're going to have to start picking up points. And of course, McSavie between the pipes for Fetistad, the classic man who we expect a little bit of a different style than most goaltenders, but it works for him, and, you know, it's worked for Fetiestad thus far. So with that, we are just a, a few moments away from puck drop. Game one 
of two between these two clubs. Again, very valuable points up for grabs here, Sin, in this matchup. Again, as we talked about, you think, oh, you have all the time in the world. It's a 30-game regular season. As we discussed, both of these teams will uh, be going over the midway point of the season with this particular matchup. And all of a sudden, oh man, we actually don't have as much time as we thought we did. So always a little bit tough at this stage of the season. Again, the coal miners just on the outside looking in in terms of the playoffs. But we'll see what happens in just a few moments. And again, a little bit later on for Lunda taking on Havu and Sin in general. It's a big week in terms of some of the matchups that we have. But I'd say every week is a big week at this stage, uh, just based off of how this season has uh, has gone. I, I don't know what it is, but the competition level always seems to step up year after year, as uh, impossible as that seems. Yeah, I, I think you every, every single season we always say, oh, it's crazy. How could it even be more crazier? Same with some of the offseason moves. And every every season seems to kind of, you know, blow our expectations out of the water here. And, you know, to, to kind of speak on your point of how the second half of the season is going to go and how hectic it's going to be. I mean, you think of a team like Root, who is, I mean, here we are in week four. They've only played 10 games so far. Uh, they, they're, they're going to have, you know, they're playing 20 games over the course of these next three weeks, which is, you know, um, twice as much as they played throughout the first three weeks. So a big opportunity for them to be able to step things up, but it could get a little crazy as well. I mean, you have less time to kind of recover, reset your mentalities before each kind of series and things like that. And But at the flip side, if you go on a run, if you keep that momentum going, it could be a good thing as well to play so much. Absolutely. And you see there on your screen now, again, what these teams are playing for. H-Red's taking home that 6K Euro prize for the winter season, looking to do so again in the spring season. If they were to do that, automatically crown grand champions, of course. If we have a new winner in the spring season, well, they'll go head to head with H-Red's in the grand final towards the end of June. As you get a look at the teams, they are ready to go. And I mean, Sin, no real surprise. Actually, there was a second sniper in there. Was yeah. there not? Yeah, Sadapoika. Looks like he's also running sniper. Maybe to try to counterbalance what we see from Afe. I mean, it's uh it's a change from the normal puck moving defenseman, playmaker, at center meta that we've seen this season. Yeah, and we're actually, I think we're seeing a two-way forward as well coming out from uh, that might be Martindale or Fulpatoflan. I couldn't quite catch it, but yeah, Fallen Coal Miners kind of uh, straying from the meta, and I guess more to be expected with what they run. Again, we talked about it. They go with the strong handedness for their wingers there, opting not for the one timers, opting for that puck protection against the boards, which it seems to, at least when we caught them on broadcast before, it seemed to have worked for their style. Absolutely. And again, you see there the Wilhelm e hockey tour continuing onward, sportsgamer.gg for all the information that you need there. Of course, with their weekly events they have going on all the way uh, into the uh, beginning of the summer here, of course. And Sin, I mean, very intrigued to see how this plays out. You never know what moments you're going to kind of see uh, for you know, people on the competitive stage, let alone what type of moments we'll see from you guys. So, of course, as always, we are still looking for your best or worst NHL 22 clips on Twitter and Instagram. Use the hashtag e Hockey moments, some IQ fuel could be yours, giving away some every single week until the end of June. So again, hashtag eHockey moments on Twitter and Instagram. Uh, and we've we've had our own moments, of course, on the uh, on the competitive side of things. And uh, again, sometimes the worst moments are easier to find than the better. But at the end of the day. Uh, you know, the, the clips regardless, it's all about the entertainment value. Absolutely it is. So we'll see how the entertainment value wants to go for this one, but I have a feeling it's going to be uh, definitely high up as Ferrystad get the zone. Absolutely. Again, Ferrystad in their road white. The Fallon Coal Miners in the home red and black. Again, both of these teams. I mean, not quite where they'd want to be in the standings. A lot of changes to their lineups. What a shot. Sebi Larson picks that far side corner, and what a start for Ferriestad. 
An absolutely furious pace from them to start off here, just firing that puck on. Something that we maybe criticized them a bit in the past for not doing enough of right there in that time. Absolutely all over the coal miners there. And it's Sebi Larson on the back end, getting his fifth coal of the season. Uh, no, excuse me, that's uh, that was uh, Furion with four goals. Uh, that's a second goal for Sebi Larson. Nonetheless, a good bit of uh, extra production uh, from the defense of Ferestad, who we did say, you know, if Ferestad wants to go a bit farther, they're going to have to step things up, and what a way to do that. Sebi Larson coming up clutch. I mean, Sin, an easy mistake to make there when Furion was not all that long yeah. ago the left defenseman uh, right alongside Lehmann's for Ferestad. So, again, how quickly things can change in this division. So we'll see. Tonski, big head of steam, charging straight into the zone. Fortunately, cut off around the back of the net. We'll see, nice play there to get it into the open space on the far side. Again, good defense in response. Miners try to make it in, dump a chase to the far side. Martindale plays that one in. Again, good job by FBK to be able to hold on to this one. And a big stretch pass. Ekin dishes back to the point. Good movement. That shot blocked down by the traffic in front. And great pressure here on the defense, but Opa Tolfin back trying to move that puck out. Great job there to gain the zone. Finding the open space. Threw one on. Hit the side of the net. And here goes the play for Rafe. Fortunately, on that occasion, not going to be able to win that foot race. Yeah, we're going to have to issue a, a small, small correction as uh, to what we were doing in the pregame here. It's Fopa Toflin playing the middle instead of the wing right now. We did have Satapoika listed there, but he's playing on that right wing side there. I was wondering, I saw the handedness and it was uh, different. I was like, oh, did Fopa Toflin switch back? But it's actually Satapoika playing on the wing. Fopa Toflin in the middle now. He does have experience playing center. So definitely a, a different look here for Fallon Coal Miners as they try to turn things around here. But as of right now, he's looking great. They have a furious pace, as you mentioned, to this one. I mean, the, the great start already halfway through this first period. FBK play it across, and they score. They double it up. Ekin finding the back of the net, his ninth of the season. Picture perfect start for Ferrystad. Absolutely. Just another great play. A beautiful pass across the slot. And Ekin's not going to miss from there. Again, someone that we expected a lot more production of uh, from early on in this season. Another guy who steps up early on in this one for Fediestad. Jumping out to a 2-0 lead here still in the first period. And Fallon Coal Miners have to find a response quickly or this could get out of hand. Fediestad is a team that can absolutely score in bunches. Pass a little bit off the mark. Let's see what the Miners can do. The answer, not much. Sebi Larson will take that one away. Play it across. Shot on. Afe trying to fight through the traffic there. Despite that smaller build, we've uh, seen it. For some reason, the balance just seems to work out as well. Bearstad using those boards for the breakout. This time, the Miners all over. Big shot from the point off the blocker and over the top of the net. Saban was able to get that stop. A big swing and a miss on a one-timer. All the way back. Ferriestad have it. Quick movement. That one through the crease. Nearly own gold. The Miners nearly got caught again. Huge hit there. The captain's down. Momentary man advantage for Ferriestad. Lehman ends the shot. Paddled away by a police control. Stonsky again having trouble with that double-team pressure. Martindale, the cut into the middle, gets absolutely leveled. And it is going to be an interference call. Controversial, perhaps. Eck into the box. Yeah, it didn't seem to not have the puck for, for too long. But nonetheless, Ekin uh, will sit for two here. This is a big, big opportunity for Falcon Coal Miners. They need to capitalize on this. Have not had a strong power play throughout the first, uh, first half of this season. they got to start turning that around right now and get a goal here. Do win that opening draw. Tonski around the back, out of reach, and all the way back to the neutral zone. Rough way to start. We'll see if they have trouble regaining the zone. A lot of teams have this season. Once you lose that initial possession, very difficult to get reestablished, as we're seeing here. Afe is going to win that foot race after the dump into the zone. This pass off the mark, but all the way back to the neutral zone, killing some valuable time. It's Afe back to his feet, and just like that. 35 seconds to go. 
in the man advantage off of the Ekin Interference Miner for Ethereum Stad as the pass off the mark. Laminens gives chase, held in. Sada Poika gets it back in a big stop by McSavid. And another one as we get back to five on five. Couple huge saves coming out from McSavid there at the end of the power play. No other than that one in tight. Went down into the spread. Eagle turned it aside, then came back in time to challenge that second shot from distance and made a very clean save. And those are two really good ones. Just one more attack. Rafe not able to cut through. Five seconds to go here. A little bit of space, or reps one wide. Furion elected the pass at the end, no dice. A two to nothing lead for Feriestad at the end of the opening 20 minutes, a great start for them. Yeah, just a really good start. Capitalizing on their chances early and getting goals from a couple guys who definitely would expect more of themselves. Remember, both Sebi Larson was, you know, fantastic uh, in the past season for Fetty Sad, which was his first with the squad as Furion had moved over to Granite Gaming. And he really looked good with stepping up into plays. And at this point, you know, getting that goal there, his second of the season was very, very big. And he's going to want to try to you know, continue to build on that. Same thing with Ekin. He, he was, you know, kind of the the conductor the locomotive whatever you want to say for that granted gaming team that just mentioned a couple minutes ago and him coming to fedia said it was something that we were very excited about just to see you know with a a more skilled team would he be able to get you know just even even higher production he hasn't quite put it together yet but getting that goal right there very good kind of start in this one. He's going to want to try to build on that, of course. And Fedistad themselves, you know, their overall offensive production, something that they want to get better. Remember, they got that even goal differential, which is surprising to say the least. And, you know, in this one, they're going to try to start turning that one around. It's a good start. We'll see if they want to build on that here in the second. Indeed, second period underway. A short side bid there for Mullen. And it bounces in front. Ekin finds it. And buries it three to nothing. Ferris had just 55 seconds into the second period. Quick starts abound for this Feriestad squad in the second. They pick up right where they left off in the first and start the first exactly as they did. Finding a way to get an early goal with some, I mean, crazy pressure early on. They're really boxed in the Fallon Coal Miners and they didn't hesitate. They weren't trying to look for anything too pretty. It was Puck's bodies to the net. Ekin gets the second of the game and Feriestad goes up 3-0. What a way to start off that period from bad to worse though for the Fallon Coal Miners as they are in the zone. Here's Martinet, what a shot, he scores! And what a way to turn things around, just a minute and five seconds after the Ekin goal, and it's back to a two goal differential. They needed a response. They got it quickly right there from Martindale, the team's leading scorer, as indicated by that green helmet, picking up his sixth goal on this season. And what a shot that was going across the body, far side on McSavid. Three to one now. Going to have to stop the bleeding and get another one here. A great shot by Martindale, his sixth of the season, as a trip is called there. And Great job by Mullen to draw that one. Power play coming up for Feriestad as Captain Furion will take a seat. Yeah, a little bit of L-skating uh, from, I believe, that was Mullen there to protect the puck, and it ends up leading to a trip on Furion here. This is a huge penalty kill for the Coal Miners. They don't want to see what the momentum they got from that goal to disappear right now. Off the draw, heck, and the big cut in. It's dumped out. Yeah, a good attempt. Again, that was... Martindale, sixth of the season, entered play today as the team's leading scorer is always signified by the golden helmet that he is wearing. Doesn't look like anyone's rocking the golden helmet today for uh, yeah. Ferris Dad, but it is Mollen, of course, team leading scorer. He has the puck now. Pass in front, and that can just not having the room to get that one on target as Martindale know where to go. Just 30 seconds now remaining. In this power play, here's Ekin again cutting in two goals already in this game. Which is back to the point for Sebi Larson again down. Low short side, they score! Afe getting involved in the fun, leads the team in goals now with 14. And it goes from bad to worse in the second. The coal miners get a little bit of optimism, it's taken away. Yeah, that was. But incredible execution by Fetisat on that power play right there. The pass to Ekin. 
behind the net right there. And as quick as he received it, he dished it off to Afe on that short side there. And Polis Control simply couldn't get back to cut off that angle in time. And I, I think he may have been thinking what a lot of people was thinking, perhaps a wraparound or perhaps Ekin. I, I don't know, but that, that pass just came so quickly right there to Afe that Polis Control nowhere near being able to cut off that short side. And it was in the back of the net before he got there. Four to one for Fediestad. And that's a heartbreaker for the coal miners. You get that goal back, then you take a penalty and you surrender a goal on the ensuing power play. How about that as well now? Three goals in less than five minutes to start off this second period. And nearly had another one there as Martindale now. Crosses over the line. Furion at the point. One timer, big glove save by McSaven. Up to his namesake, of course. Hanski down low. Good movement. Bit too much traffic in front for Sadapoika to get that shot through. Mahalo taking his time, looking at his options, is able to find Lehmanen's back to the point. Malin looking along the half wall, drops back. Great movement here. That one banked off the back of the net, still bouncing around. Welcome to the league. The huge hit by Lehmanen's keeps the possession alive. Walk over to the far side, Ekin recovers. Malin to the point. Again, tremendous control here for FBK. DDD one-timer just wide on the far side post. Wow, bud. You're on my highlight right Big now. hit there. Man down. Mullins slow to get up. Bullminer's able to take advantage. They're in possession now. Fopatofla. His pass off the mark. He's able to recover again. Knocked loose. Now back to him. Furion. Well, Patoflin gets wiped out. The physicality from Lehman. It's here's Afe. One man to beat and a great poke check by Tonski. Pace certainly picking up here throughout the middle stages of this second period. Tonski the big feed now. Sada Poika. He'll go around the back of the net. Here we are. Now Paul Patoflin again and just not able to hold on to the puck. Big outlet pass again for Afe. Big burst of speed. Tried to cut back to the forehand. That one ends up on net. Tonski holds it, at least for the moment. And a penalty is called. It's going to be a trip. And it will be Malin to the box. And yes, and you see it right there. Yeah, just got a bit too aggressive trying to get that stick back. But I am in incredibly impressed so far with Fetty Stats' performance in this one. This is a completely different key, different team than we saw in the first half of the season. Their chemistry seems to be there. Their, their play style, it's fluid. And that's something that we didn't see in the first half of the season. But right now, they got to kill this penalty off. And another trip going to be called. Nearly a full two minutes of five on three. And... We're looking for an opening for the coal miners to get back into this one. This is the time. Yeah, rough, uh, uh, just kind of rough animation there from Sebi Larson as the turn sort of led that secondary poke to uh, go right in the feet there. But nonetheless, yeah, five on three. This is the opportunity that the Fallon coal miners need to turn this game around and perhaps turn their power play around on the season. On the draw, scramble for the pucks out of Poika across and McSavid got a pad to it. Had he not, would have been a wide open net for the opposition to shoot at. See again what happens on this face off with no Malin. Fopa Toflin should get the win, but maybe not. As Ekin, of course, has played his fair share of center, but just the coal miners right back in control, and McSavid never out of control. Great composed save. We'll have another face off. Absolutely. I mean, that was such a a positionally sound play by him that that it almost looks like that incredible save is a bit understated but that's a tough save to make beautiful pass across the slot and McSavid says no Stonsky sends that around the back 50 seconds to go here in the five on three Fopa Toflin's pass off the mark and cleared by Ekin Afe gonna chase this one down and win the race dishing right back to the neutral zone and Heartbreak here for the Miners is just not just not able to get that puck back at least fast enough. They do regain the zone. But we are back to five on four, and that's all they needed. What a shot. Sada Poika getting the Miners back to within two. And right when all hope looked like it was lost. 
That was an incredible shot coming out. Remember, he is using that sniper build in this one. So the high zone one-timers. Oh, and with the 1T trait. So, yeah, that was blistering there from the, the right circle uh, left on your screen. But right circle for the Fallen Coal Miners. And what a shot. Bringing it back to just a two-goal deficit now. Capitalizing on that power play at the tail end of it after one man had come out of the box. But that's absolutely huge. For the coal miners here, now they need to try to compound that momentum and turn it into a bit more. But Fedistad now in possession and looking for a zone entry. How about that? Four goals combined now, two apiece here in this second period. We hit the final minute of the play. Afe for Akin nearly. Found the back of the net for a hat trick. Sebi Larson's shot is denied. Miners still having a ton of trouble securing this puck. They finally do. Furion, two seconds to go, and they run out of time. Great hit there at the FBK blue line to stifle that rush. So, very exciting. Goal-filled second period. But Sim, we're right back to where we were when we entered the period. A two-goal lead for Fairstad. Yeah, so it's good news for Fedestad if you're the coal miners. You're still in quite, quite a bit of a hole here, and they got to try to dig their way out of it. But... I, I, they're at least, you know, getting some pushback here. It's just that rough start. The two early goals really kind of doomed them in this one. If you think about, you know, kind of how the game's gone since then, a bit more back and forth. But Fede said, so with the advantage, uh, a lot of the time, at least when it comes to uh, at least perceivably the offensive zone pressure. And yes, indeed, they do have a two minute lead in in that regard and a shot advantage as well. And of course, the most important advantage they won on the scoreboard here. But some good plays coming out from the coal miners. That one especially, you know, a high zone one-timer. Something that we don't see a whole heck of a lot of here in the EU scene, but it's really effective, especially, as you see there, if you have a build like Sada Poika, the one-time zone ability, as well as rocking a sniper right there. Absolutely scary when it comes to the strength on those shots from there, but... Two goal deficit in the third period. It definitely can be done here, but the Fallen coal miners have to work quickly, and... You know, if you stretch the game out too much against Fedestad, that uh, the scary counterattack can come back into play. Something that Fedestad has not been relying as much on throughout the course of the season, and it could be really working to their strength as this one goes on. Save there by McSavid. The Miners still in possession. Another stop there as that one got through the traffic. Again, we thank you all for joining us. ECL Elite Division action. Prime Time Sunday, of course, brought to you as always by our friends at Wilhelm, Koval Nakatsi, and ST Hockey. The first game of two between Feriestad and the Fallen Coal Miners. Again, a little bit later on for London and Havu. Okay, another chapter in their storied history. Granted, the, uh, you know, the differences, of course, in the, the standings between those two may be a bit more drastic than it's ever been. Certainly make for an interesting matchup here as, again, Barry's that up by two, and uh, he's, did, whoever, I didn't even see who got hit there. He's down by two in terms of brain cells after a hit like that. Martindale, again, trying that cut and drew a penalty earlier in the game with that exact move. An offside call here, though. Yeah, that was Afe laying the hit as well. Like He's got that tiny little build, but again, if you know your build, know how it performs, you could pretty much do just about anything that you set your mind to, and Afe just absolutely clobbered him and created that counterattack going the other way. So again, the Miners in the attacking zone, but only momentarily. Various dad, head of steam, what a goal! Ekin pulls to the backhand and buries it. It's a hat trick. And now a 5-2 lead for Feriestad. Kind of waiting and seeing if he would be able to pick up that hat trick. He did do, He did so just there. And that, that's a heartbreaker for the coal miners. They started off the period as Feriestad had started off the previous two with a flurry of chances. Looking like they had a bit of momentum. But Puck goes back down the other way. Ekin makes no mistake. And that may just be the one to put this out of reach. They still have a lot of time for the coal miners here. But the offense of Feriestad has looked... Just absolutely outstanding. And, of course, McSaven between the pipes here. Hard to imagine him giving up three goals with the amount of time left. But, whoa there. Um, if, if the coal miners want to get back into it, they're going to have to well, play as fast as that puck just moved. Steve Ferris has back in the attack. Zone because of it. What a shot. Lehmanens gets involved. 6-2. to two. Now the score off of a bomb of a shot. Yeah, well, speaking of... Uh, <laughs> the good offensive Fenistad, there it comes again, and 
Air just beginning to run away with this one and pull his control. Not a whole heck of a lot he can do on this one. You just try to get in this best position as possible and hope for the best. But another blistering shot. That one from Lehmanins finds the far side, puts Fedistad up six to two. And good gracious, what a game for Fedistad. And six goals. I don't know if that is their highest confirmed goal output on the season. Wouldn't necessarily be surprised if it were to be the case, but it's been a fantastic performance from them, and we still have half a period to go here. And we always talk about goal differential being a factor as well, so the Miners still a lot to play for. Try and get one back, if not more. That pass goes all the way through the slot, held in by Lehmanns momentarily. No, Martindale makes a good play. Good movement there. Sadapoika tried to go back to Popatoflin. And FBK have done a phenomenal job of shutting down the slot and limiting those high danger chances that the coal miners have had. Here, unable to recover this one. A little bit of a self sauce there. Again, just completely stifled. The four checking pressure for FBK has been something else in this contest. Yeah, I like that they're keeping it up even when they have a four-goal lead, but here come Fury. And a steam, <laughs> great pass, great goal. Martindale with his second sim. We could almost see it coming there. He had a step on the defender and made no mistake once he got that pass. Absolutely saw that kind of two-on-one developing. Immediately stopped whatever thought was going through my head to just watch that play develop. And a great finish right there from Martindale. McSaven tried the uh, spread eagle once again, kind of chose the wrong way to slide. And the Fallon Coal Miners do get one back. Back to a three-goal deficit. But again, time the largest factor in this one. Just six minutes remaining. And with the way Fetty has been able to push back every time, I still think the dagger has been placed in the backs of the Coal Miners. I think McSavid was uh, expecting Martindale to kind of carry a bit more momentum towards goal once he received the pass. Stopped flat, had a wide open net to shoot at. He gets another shot off there. And it's Debbie Larson. Able to take it away. Alex to not set up off a what could have been a disastrous feed with Tonski back there. This one's going to go all the way back. Three and a half minutes to play. The lead back down to three. Certainly be one of the more surprising comebacks we've ever seen at this stage. Furion will recover it. Look to lead that charge. Great work from Martindale. He's been the standout player for the coal miners in this game. Great pass, great save. Nick Saban read it perfectly. And it stays a three goal differential. Yeah, quick little development after that turnover there. The pass over to that one time, I believe it's Sada Poik over there. He didn't quite get the one time off on the animation. Just a quick wrister, but effective. Nonetheless, a big save coming out from McSavid there. And the rebound was a little dicey, but his team gets it. Final minute of play here. Fofa Toflin nowhere to go. Great job there to get it back. And McSavid forced to make the stop and to hold on to it. Yeah, good forechecking pressure from the coal miners here. They're at least giving a... Uh, you know, Ferisad, something to think about here by forcing these uh, loose pucks and grabbing some of the turnovers as well as Ferisad still looking to kind of, uh, you know, get their own counterattack going, which is, you know, a good thing here. But also the defense, they definitely want to tighten up a little bit. It's off a great drop pass from Mullen. Screen move, it ends up down low for Reckon. Get a hat trick in this game. Martindale battling with him. An unfortunate turnover there. Sadapoika trying to win it back. And on that far side. Winning the battle along the boards. 25 seconds to go. A victory secured for Feriestad here in this first game. So it'll be their ninth win of the season, pushing them up to 20 points. They entered play in a playoff spot, and this will only help the cause. Because again, the opportunity, we talked about it, they pulled off the uh, double heading into action today in their prior matchup. Good save there as time expires, and they start off today with the win as well. Yeah, absolutely. Six points in their last three games. It's definitely uh, trending in the right direction. If you're Fediestad here, you now move to 9, 4, and 2. It's a great, great start, I mean, to this series. And if you're the coal miners here, you got to try to, you know, work something out. Your pushback was good. The problem was you could not keep that puck out of the net. You couldn't stop the assault of Fediestad and 
that's kind of what it came down to there is just the relentless pressure coming up from Fedestad, relentless response. Every time it looked like the Fallon Coal Miners began to push back, Fedestad just completely stifled and killed their momentum with a response goal, or in some cases, even two response goals. And they win this game, you know, six to three. And again, it was, I think, their most potent offensive game, at least by the eye test. And I think you may be right. I think that's their highest goal output in a single game of the season. And what a time to get it, you know, after this midway point coming down the stretch here. You want to try to pick up all the points that you can, and a strong performance like that will work wonders. Good gracious, six points. Ekin involved in every single goal for Fedestad. What a performance from him. I mean, we're kind of waiting and seeing when he would uh, go off and kind of get those numbers up to where we expected him to be. He may have just kind of done that with one game. I mean, a fantastic performance indeed. Now up to 23 points on the year with 15 games played. We talked about it, sitting that stat line. 17 and 14, not that, not looking that pretty. 23 and 15, that looks yeah. a lot better. That's all he needed was the one game to kind of get that back on track. But it's a rough way to go. 14 shots apiece, nine goals between the two teams. Not exactly the, uh, you know, brightest of performances for the netminders here, for better or worse. I mean, there were some super high quality chances that, Really not too much you could do about yeah and uh both net miners definitely want a better performance uh for themselves in the second game but again it's i think like you said some of these chances were just so high quality i mean this one right here so ridiculous i mean polo's control still even at the end of his animation didn't quite get over to cut off that far side that's how quick that play developed there and this one as well, I love this. The high the high one-timer in the zone. Sadapoika using his build to perfection right there to squeeze that by McSavid. Again, kind of before he could react as well. That high zone one-timer, not something we see super often in the EU, but is very, very good. And Ekin capitalizing on that backhand right there. It's just a tremendous game from him. A great game for both of the offenses, uh, so to speak. And in this next one, it's going to have to be the defenses stepping up to give their goaltenders a little bit of help there as you see that goal from Lehman is just sneaking it past the blocker here. And this was the last one, kind of the last-ditch effort from the coal miners here as you know, Martindale was able to squeeze that one uh, through as, yeah, he said his skating moments and completely died. McSavid probably expecting him to take some of that speed and go to the backhand or at least shoot for that far side. He did no such thing. And, that kind of uh, eased the deficit a little bit at the tail end of things, but it was a uh, you know a little too little too late for the coal miners here who now fall below fall below a 500 record. Absolutely. So with that, again, our first game of the day in the books. We'll be back after a brief intermission while I fix the hole in my head, and we'll be back for game two in just a few moments. Stick with us. All right, everybody, and we are back. Unfortunately, uh, still with the skin abrasion, but you know, hey. We do the best we can. You never know. You wake up, you never know what you're going to get on the day. But what we have gotten so far is in some pretty good competitive hockey. Although Ferriestad as well in that first game, just able to stay ahead throughout the majority of that game, throughout the entirety of that game. Every time the coal miners really started to get any type of momentum, they just weren't able to uh, kind of consistently grab said momentum before Ferriestad were able to kind of equal it out. Yeah, and that was just a... The best performance that we've seen out of Fetty set on broadcast uh, throughout the course of this season. They were just uh, you know, kind of everywhere, especially on the offensive side of things. They're, they're probably going to want to tighten things up a little bit on the defensive end of things. I think a few too many A-grade opportunities made their way toward McSaban, something that you're not going to get away with when you play uh, for Lunda or an h -red. So they're going to want to tighten that up. But I love the offensive output. I love the aggression. And I love the willingness to throw the puck on net when those higher percentage plays weren't there. Something that uh, That's kind of a trap that we've seen Ferrisad fall into over the last couple seasons. But this one especially is just looking for two pretty of a play and they end, the, end up sometimes not even getting a shot and squandering a lot of his own time again instagram twitter use the hashtag e hockey moments we want to see the best and worst that nhl 22 has had in store for you again giving away uh you know some iq fuel every week until the end of june so again hashtag e hockey moments we want to see the best and worst that you've experienced here in what has been a very interesting year for the uh, EA NHL community, of course. And again, a little bit later on in this broadcast for Lunda, taking on Havu, that's still in store. A little bit later on, a big, big night for Havu Gaming, 
as we look to season, I'd say in a, in a sense, a definitive answer for where they stand this season. Yeah, I mean, nothing like, you know, kind of an old rivalry to sort of uh, uh, snap that, uh, or at least try to wake them up out of their stupor. The problem is, again, they don't have Flyer Kung, and he's actually on for London now, so it'll be really, really interesting to see him uh, facing off against his uh, former team, the team that he captained for season after season, and won a couple championships with as well. The prediction up in chat. Make sure to voice your opinion here as... And Fairstad, their home leg here in the home green, getting that early chance. The offensive side of things, Fopa Tofan, again, just running out of room. Very active defensive skill sticks there from the Fairstad defenders. So tough to find any spaces. I think Malum is expecting a quick out. Great pass there, though, to Sebi Larson. He gets it back. The big spin to the forehand, and Fortune Lehman and shot just denied there. Martindale able to get in the way of that one. And it's again down for Mala. Kick back to the point. Sebi Larson's there for him. Back for Ekin again, fresh off of a six-point performance. That pass a bit off the mark. And a bit of reprieve for the coal miners there. As again, uh, in danger of getting hemmed into their own zone. Yeah, it's another quick start. What a pass right there. And a goal! <laughs> Afe finds the space! And Sin, I don't know how he did it. It looked like it was covered so well by Police Control. one nothing, Ferry is dead. I think he had to have gone five-hole right there. There's really no other way. I think they, he can sneak that puck through. We'll get a good look at it right here. Yes, indeed, goes through the five-hole there of Polis Control. And just as I was going to say, another uh, hot start for Ferry is dead. Well, they're able to capitalize on that by scoring off of the rush. Tremendous pass. I'm not sure who made that initial pass, but they hit Sebi Larson in stride on that left-hand side as he pinched up to start that play, and that pass through to Afe was a thing of beauty as well. And we'll see if uh, Fallon Coleminers can get a quicker response than they were able to do in the first one. But here we come. Ferry said back on the attack, and that's not good. Sada Poika will be sitting for two after that trip in the neutral zone. Goes from bad to worse, and this has kind of been the theme. He kept his arms up the whole way down, poke checks, immediately goes to the box. Yeah, that's unfortunate for him, buddy. The huge opportunity for Fediestad here to capitalize on this power play and start this game off the same way they started the last game off, with a 2-0 lead. Indeed, they had that 2-0 lead at the end of the first. Just get an even bigger lead here through the opening 20 minutes. Laminance again working with Mullen and a fanned opportunity for Afe. That looks like a guaranteed goal. Tough break. Absolutely. Polish control slid all the way over, and then that loose puck kind of almost found its way in as well. Hectic moment for the fallen coal miners down low, but they are able to dodge that bullet. Off the face off and control again. Shot off the pads. They could deflect it off of the defender in front and Tyrion will clear this one out. Bopa Toplin is able to pick it up. Has Martindale with him. Good poke check go by Lehman and to take that one away. Ekin now over the line. Looking. The first time, I believe, that the prior goal was the first goal Ekin wasn't involved in. Yeah. So just 10 seconds to go on the power play, and that will just about do it. Goal miner surviving a bit of a scare. Huge hit there. Loose puck again, covered by Laminance. But you like what you're seeing from Fetty Sad at the same time. They don't capitalize, but they continue to dictate the pace of play. The puck more often than not in their hands. Puck bouncing around. Fopa Toflin able to recover. Slots down the other way. Martindale still trying to hold on to it. Laminance has been fantastic here. Fortunately, that pass off the mark, but he does clear the zone. Old breakout here for the coal miners, and unfortunately, offside there. Great read by Ekin to shut that one down. And now Lehman is trying to get things going for Ferry's dead. Great dump and chase. Ekin's actually going to win the race on the far side. Gets back to Sebi Larson at the point. Pinches in. Great cover there. Shot gets through. Afe hits the side of the goal as the puck somehow found its way to him. Plays it over to his left. Ekin. Oh, just missing that poke check. Tremendous pressure by Afariastad in the offensive zone. Martindale, what a pass, what a goal! Just what the doctor ordered for the coal miners as out of nowhere, Sin, after being hemmed in their own zone for minute after minute. 
A great quick pass. And it's Sada Poika finding the goal to tie this game. Yeah, again, from a similar spot as the one in last game, a bit deeper now towards the lower part of the circle. But that one-timer has so much steam on it right there. And that seems to be the look that the Falcon Coal Miners want to go to. And perhaps why Sada Poika playing on the wing right now to be able to let that thing go with the velocity that it has. Really no chance for McSavid right there. Good job of weathering the store by the Coal Miners. And now it's a tie game with that response goal. See how Ferriestaff respond to that. Again, it was a great quick set of passes. They've had to rely on the counterattack. It works again. No icing on the play here. Keep that clock ticking. And for those that missed it, a 6-3 victory for Ferriestaff in the first game. Martindale. Sadapoika nearly picked the corner. Great glove save by McSavin. Big save right there. It's starting to see a little bit of momentum coming up from the Fallon Coal Miners. Their counterattack is looking pretty good. And, you know, Fetty Stat's still looking uh, like the better team for the most part. But it is only a tie game. And all it's going to take is one chance, one bounce here. And Coal Miners are getting some pushback. Puck down low. A cut in front there. Surprise Martindale. Elected the pass. Might have had room. Tuck that in short side. He's still pressuring the potential counterattack here. Final minute almost out of time. Miscommunication here for Ferriestad. Ekin working with Laminins to gain the zone. Sost in front, kicked out. And Mullins backhands picked off. So we will go to the second period with a tie game on our hands thanks to this goal from Sada Poika. Just an absolute bomb from that circle. It was a great, great play. And definitely looks like they're looking for that pass more often than not. You know, no matter what it is, whether they're in the zone on the forecheck or in that case on the counterattack right there. It's a good job from the forwards to sort of spread out right there. One pass over, a one touch back across. And a blast again. Big David could not do a whole heck of a lot on that one. And if you're the coal miners, you're feeling pretty good. Again, you got out possessed pretty heavily in that first period. You know, by two full minutes in. You know, got out shot as well, but you got that one chance and you were able to find the tying goal. And again, fortunately for them, and maybe a bit of misfortune for Fetty said that well they played, but you know, Fetty said wasn't able to find that second goal. And so all it took was that one response from the coal miners. It's an even game going into the second period here. If you're the coal miners, though, you are going to have to step it up a bit. Again, they were, you know, you can't allow Fetisad to continue to dictate the pace like that, keep getting the chances like that, because with their potent offense, with as good as players they have, especially on that front three, they are going to find a way to score here. So you want to try to get that possession back in your favor here if you're the Coal Miners and see if they could do just that as this second period is underway. Good shot from the point, rebound, and a swing and a miss from Martin Tail on the doorstep. Tough break there. But a promising start to this second period for the Coal Miners. PK working it back in a rocket pass to the point. Sebi Larson, no shot of handling that one. So the Laminans can do now. And the majority of the breakouts on his side of the ice. And great job there by the coal miners to shut down that rush. Yeah, a lot of breakouts coming from there and a lot of pressure coming out from the four checkers of the coal miners. Martindale in particular, he's been. You know, really trying to hound those defensemen, not not allowing them to make the comfortable passes that they want. Probably uh, also trying to get in their face and prevent some of those uh, long stretch pass Omaha plays from developing too. We haven't seen Fetisad be able to really go for those. ZPK back in the attacking zone. Sebi Larson stripped of the puck there by Sada Poika. Big head of steam for Popa Tofa. That's again picked off. There is that. To get back in control of this game. They were never behind in that first game. Hot start, and they never looked back. Mullen for Sebi Larson went off of a skate. If anything, that might have been more beneficial. Poke check by Mullen. Sebi again able to pick that one up. Mullen right back down to him. Ekin again working a pass across, and again a swing and a miss. Off a wide open net, just couldn't chip that one as it went through the blue paint. Oh, now scoring his options. Shot, save, rebound. No, it's poked. It's, I think it's poked in by the defender. Either that or Sebi Larson overpowers the goaltender. 
It's in a bit of a weird one, but you can't say it's undeserved. Two to one, Feriestad. Absolutely. Great bit of zone play coming out from Feriestad right there with a, uh, a high circle one-timer of their own coming out from Sebi Larson that somehow found its way in. I still couldn't exactly quite spot it there on that replay, how exactly it found the back of the net, but found the back of the net, it absolutely did. And Feriestad taking that lead back two to one. A huge goal there is perhaps again just overpowering the netminder. That initial bit of contact and here's that right back to where they want to be. Ekin battling for it in the corner. That poke check. Popatopin able to hold on to it. And all about the responses as it typically is. And we'll see what type of response we get from the coal miners here now that again they trail in this game. Ball check there by Ekin to keep it alive. Laminens holds on. Goes over. Pass shot scores. Saying it all started with that Laminens interception. They had the numbers. Afe has his second. Tremendous play by Laminens right there, as you mentioned. Started that whole thing off, and then the pass down low kind of through the crease. Third time's the charm for Afe. He doesn't miss that one. Gets his stick on it, puts it in the back of the net. And just like that, Feristad have jumped out to a two-goal lead here. Three to one. And getting in the closer to that danger territory for the Fallon Coal Miners, who the initial pushback was good. But Feristad continuing to just be able to find ways to keep their momentum going on the offensive side of the pucks, whether it's, you know, a good zone time and cycles or good counterattacks, or in that case, a great turnover forced and capitalizing on it. Now a... 3-2-1 lead with those two unanswered goals for Ferris to have what a pickup by Afe. Able to hold on to it. Ekin has it now. Ferris to have looking as good as they've looked all season long. Afe just denied by Polis control there. Yeah, they go back to that play. You know, pass down low behind the net to Ekin and quick pass out front to Afe trying to catch the goaltender on the on the short side there. Afe wasn't quite squared up and that time Polis control had a better read on it. Was able to make the save. Off the draw, turned over, shot, save. Again, police control <laughs> forced to really be prepared at all moments and no uh, no time to breathe for him in terms of the opportunities that are being generated. Ekin, see what he can do. Again, goes back to the point, Lamin ends, D to D. Great block there, though, to take that one away by Fulpatopla. Finds Sada Poika, he's bumped off the puck. Martindale now, back to the point. Tonski, Fury on shot, block, no. Save it, able to get a piece of it and cover. We've seen a couple of shots and sneak their way through traffic, that one included. Yeah, and it's uh, been a bit, bit tougher on the goaltenders as well, as especially some of those ones from distance, the quick DDD passes back and forth and then the shot off. Hard to get in front of those as a shot blocker there, and we haven't seen a lot of shot blocks in this one either. Martindale across, oh. what a stop by McSavin. One for the highlight reel, as this stays a two-goal differential. Beautiful pass over by Martindale right there, and then absolutely stoned by McSavin. He's able to get back across and goes into the splits, just getting the outside of this toe of it on the puck. It's a good interception there by Ekin to take it away. Just three minutes to go here in the second period. Larson goes for Mullen. He still has it despite it bouncing around. Tried to go back to Ekin, and again, a bit too much traffic. Covered once more by Laminens. About a minute to go here, minute and a half in this second period. See what Ekin can do. It trickles back to the point. Penalty is called as well. And we will see a fair stat power play. Again, not something that the coal miners want to see right there. The pressure really seeming to get to them here. They get a bit more more and more desperate to kind of get things out. That's not a bad stickless attempt coming out uh, from Furion right there. But just unfortunately for them, he just somehow kind of slashed the guy right there. And we're going to see that Fetisad power play go back to work. It will be split over two periods here. But they've had a great power play so far in the season and tonight as well. Accurate. Good initial pass. Laminens. And in the open space, nobody home. Perhaps one more chance here for FBK. Runs there by Tonski, can't clear. It gets bumped off by Malin into the slot, looking. 
three seconds. Sebby Larson shot, good blocker, saved by police control at the end. Maybe not the best look they could have generated, but still forcing a save. Yeah, they're definitely looking for something. They got that pass over to Sebi Larson, but he couldn't quite get the one-time animation, sort of caught it weird and just kind of shoveled a shot on net. But nonetheless, not a bad setup coming up from Fetty Sad with the limited time that they had to work with here. And they head into the third period with a two-goal lead again ahead. And the coal miners here just simply aren't able to stop the assault of Fetty Sad. They continue to be able to find ways to get their attack going, counterattacks. Uh, forcing turnovers on the four check and when they have that zone they're hard pressed to give it up i mean look at the time and attack differential almost five full minutes between the two just a 10 second uh 10 second gap from being a full five minutes it's just been all fediastad and this one who have not only picked up where they left off from the last game but have seemingly improved upon it despite not getting the amount of goals they're really just completely dictating the pace of play and yeah i think that shot just overpowered him and kind of was sliding through that five hole there at the tail end of the replay it was a nice response goal from the coal miners there as we saw but that's as good as it's gotten for them so far on this one and here they find themselves again in a two in a, in a hole heading into the third period here and starting it off on the penalty kill we'll see if that extra goal is enough i mean for the coal miners, a free goal deficit on a couple of occasions. Puck bouncing around, and Willis Control able to make the save. Three seems to be the magic number set in terms of the proper amount of insurance. Yeah, definitely, and you know, Fairy Sad's going to be looking for at least that much here at the tail end of uh, this game as we get started here in this third period. They want to do that on the power play here if they can. So we have a clear. It's FBK still on the attack. 20 seconds to go. On the man advantage. It's going to be Larson looking around. He's down behind the net. Covered by Ekin. We are back to even strength. Ekin for Laminance. See what he can do. Circles back. Goes to Ekin. Nearly pick it off. And maybe it all comes out in the wash. Ekin couldn't handle that pass. Huge hit there by Mullen. Spirion gains the zone for the Cole Miners. That rocket pass ends up on net. Out of the way by McSaven. The quick out down the far side. Lehman has had that read perfectly. Some of the best hockey we've seen Lehman has played in a long time. Yeah, absolutely. He's been absolutely on fire. What an intercept right there from Ekin as well. Oof, fortunately for Sebi Larson, just not able to gain the line. Yeah, tell he's a bit frustrated with that. The way he just kind of threw that puck disgustingly to the side towards the benches there. He just couldn't quite hold the line right there. Positioning was there, but you know, with the way the defensemen kind of work on the uh, blue line, it can be tough to hold that line, especially uh, cutting it as close as he was there. But nonetheless, still a good situation that they find themselves in. Break there for Sada Poika that one was intercepted. Plays out the pads, wrap around, and it dies at the side of the post. So close yet so far. Oh, that that was Sada Poika. That was all him right there. That's the chance for him to get the second, sec his second goal of the game and cut that. Deficit once again back to one goal. McSaven nowhere to be found. He was so late getting back to that post because of the way he, you know, contested that initial opportunity. But Sadapoika just couldn't find his way into the back of the net. Great block. That one now sent to the far side. Almost seven minutes gone here. The faster the time goes, the less obviously it benefits the coal miners. This will go down for icing, though. Great read by Tons. Face off here again. Mullen entering play today with a percentage advantage. Up on the draw, Ferrystad have it, but not exactly an envious spot for Laymanens. He still works himself out of it. He can do no wrong tonight. He has it here again. 11 and a half to play. Mullen for Ekin. Looking. Good. Save there by Police Control. Played it off the pads. Martindale. Good give and go there with Fulpa Tumplin. What a pass. Back to the point. Fury on Tonski. Back again. Great blocker. Save. Phenomenal work from McSavid for Ferriestad. They time it well. Mullen backhand denied. Great saves on both ends of the ice. And a little bit of physical contact for good measure. 
Wow, I'm not too sure how Mullen managed to stay on side right there. The puck isn't bounced through the, the kind of legs of someone else slowed up a lot, but he was able to do so. Went with a kind of a backhand opportunity there with offhand the doorstep looking for the rebound. They just simply didn't capitalize. Flexion look right there and good save by Polis Control. He's doing his best to keep his team in it right now. He's been called upon to make some big saves. Eight minutes to play here. The coal miners trying to get something out of this match day. And losing that first game by the score of 6-3. to three. Here comes Feriestad one more time. Great job on the back pressure by Fopa Toflin. And a good interception there by Sadapoika. Six and a half. That time ticking down. They need a quick one here. Really put the pressure on Feriestad. Feriestad looking for that goal to seal the deal. And a good save again somehow. That puck has eyes and gets through the traffic. Put to Oakland now. Is that a runway? But Furion's there, and maybe Sin. I'm just going to have a guess. That's not what he was looking for. Absolutely not. Maybe trying to send that one a bit further down the boards, but it it's often goes directly out of the zone and a bit of a self inflicted wound, something that you don't want to see for the coal miners here as they are struggling to get this puck settled. They finally do. Hanski's one-timer blocked by Afe Fofatoflin. Chance and a good blocker save. Excuse me, glove save there uh, for McSavid. Great job to kind of track that one. We have two minutes to play. Mullen not able to maintain possession. Good work there. Isada Poika, who nearly got it back. What a great interception by Ekin to prevent that pass. As we hit one minute to go. Here in regulation, a two-goal lead. For Feriestad, just You're on my a few more moments to go before they walk away with all four points in this matchup. Four men in the attacking zone here now. But it's still FBK in control. Sadapoika finally gets it. Tries to get to the forehand. He does. Shot blocked. Sebi Larson holds. Lehman and great job by the coal miners here. In front. Doesn't go. And that pass off to Mark. From Martindale, they win it back one more time. Sadapoika, that shot just one second chance at the side of the goal. So close yet so far for Fopa Toflin. Puck continuing the Those bounce around. Lehman is able to settle it. Afe gets crushed. But the puck in the coal miner's zone. Mullen has it. And that will do it. That shot's blocked, still bouncing around. And indeed, our final score, three to one. Four points on the day for Feriestad. A great result for them here today, Sid. Absolutely huge. And this uh, hot streak of theirs pushes on with another 2-0 in a series, this time against the Coal Miners. And, man, there were some close calls there for the Coal Miners at the end off the side of the net. Some saves from McSaver, but they simply couldn't find that one to get their way back within one in this game. And as unfortunate as it is, again, Fetty Stad, a well-deserved four out of four points here. And as we sort of mentioned, they're really beginning to heat up. And I'm just going to say it again. I don't think they've ever looked better um, this season than they did in those two games. They were just all over the coal miners here who, again, have started up there for the most part. They've been sitting in a playoff position uh, for the most majority of the season. Only now do the fallen coal miners finally find themselves out of that. And Unfortunately, after this one, they'll be perhaps pushed even further down the standings as Fetisad just completely controlled both of these games, really almost from start to finish. And in the second one, even even more so with the, with the control, but they didn't get as many goals. But at the end of the day, what they got was two points, and that's the most important part is Ekin only getting a, a single point in that one after a six-point performance, but I'm sure he'll forgive himself uh, just with the way he... he just what he did in that first game, he was just absolutely incredible. And But Fetisad, man, just really, really good look. This was what we expected from this lineup when we first saw the rosters coming in with Ekin joining, you know, Sebi Larson, Lehman and on the point together. This is kind of what we expected to see. And it's really being able to come to fruition here in the second half of the season there as we saw that beautiful play from Coal Miners. Unfortunately, their lone goal in this contest. Again, we get a look at the goals here in this game. And again, that one just sneaking in. Looked like, again, it might have gone five holes. Some tough breaks in, in this set of games. 
for these goaltenders, uh, specifically police control in terms of the ones that managed to go five hole. But I mean, what what can you do, right? You can't blame the netminder on that. I mean, that's literally essentially an unstoppable shot that we just yeah. saw go in there for that last highlight. Oh, absolutely. It's a it's a cross crease pass down low, essentially across the crease. And I'm pretty sure Afe uses close quarters, too. So even if you slide back in time, Afe with the sniper build with close quarters still might find a way to pick that corner there. But again, it was just not enough time for Fallon coal miners to be able to work their way back. Like they did get some decent chances. Now, just imagine if they're able to get, you know, a couple more minutes of time on attack and they maybe could have had a chance, but Fede said simply didn't allow that to happen. They were terrific in the neutral zone, breaking things up. Lehmanen's had himself a heck of a two game, despite perhaps not finding the scoring sheet too much. He was everywhere on the defensive side of the Bucks and really helping to create some of those counterattacks, leading the breakout in so many ways. And I mean, that's that's exactly what you want from uh, from one of your defensemen back there is to step up in those huge kind of key moments like he did in those two games. So with that, everybody, our first two games of this broadcast in the books, Ferriestad walking away with four points. And after our brief intermission, we will be back. It is, as always, one of the most anticipated matchups in every regular season calendar for Lunda Hockey taking on Havu Gaming. That'll be coming up in just a few moments. The uh, two game regular season set between the two perhaps bitterest rivals that we have had in the ECL Elite Division. We'll be back in just a few moments. Stick with us.